Angeles Crest, Highway 2, spanning 66 miles over the San Gabriel Mountains. Construction originally began back in 1929 when it was originally intended to be a fire access road. During World War II, construction halted but resumed again and was finally completed in 1956. The road was constructed by prison labor from Camp 37. Little did they know, the originally intended use of the road would be far from what it's used for today. Angeles Crest, or sometimes referred to as just the Crest, is now a motorsports enthusiast playground for the residents of Los Angeles County. Thank <laughs> you. 
Nestled deep within the heart of Angeles Crest is Newcomb's Ranch. The ranch serves as an outpost to hang out, grab a bite to eat, to see other motorcyclists, and to be seen. Hey guys, my name is Marco and I'm, I'm gonna talk a little bit about the bike. I'm gonna sort of go over why I chose this style of bike. Coming from a 2018 Street Bob club style, you know, I, I rode that thing really hard and, and did a lot of canyon riding with that bike. After that, I, I, I decided to get the, the Fab Bob that was more performance oriented with the inverted forks, obviously the smaller gas tank, um, you know, all around performance. It was awesome to go through the canyons. So, you know, being very narrow, it was very easy to go through the LA traffic. Having that experience of, of the soft tails and knowing the type of riding that I like to do, riding canyons, riding you know long distances. I wanted something that would combine the nimbleness of the, the street bob with the performance of, of the fat bob. This year for 2020 model sort of answered that for me and came out with the Lowrider S. It had the performance, but it also looked aesthetically great. Um, so that's the reason why I chose this to start off with in this platform was because I, I sort of wanted to build something that, that would be modern, that would represent a new generation of riders. Being that I ride a lot in LA and I, I do a lot of canyon riding, like I said, having the, the fairing is a must, you know, especially during long trips, doing a lot of highway miles. Having this fairing is just absolutely a must here in, here in Southern California. And again, I wanted to go for that FXRT look that came out straight from the factory and not just something that I put together piece by piece. I wanted something that would come together all as one and I, I think that the whole aesthetics of the bike I just wanted to feel like that was purposely built with the type of riding that I do here in LA. All right guys so we're gonna start off from the front and like the different modifications I did to the bike that would fit my style of riding. Lindell rotors with Lindell brakes. Being a 114 and being a stage three, we needed some, some stopping power. And I felt that, you know, the pedigree of windows has always been great. My first time running them and they're just, just amazing. They don't fade and, you know, just stop in a dime. Next up, we have our, our TBR turnout. Um, I've ran a couple different TBRs in my other bikes and, and other brands. I think that just performance wise, the TBR, you know, it just, you know, you get a lot, a lot of power from it. I decided to go, go with the TBR again. Also decided to go with the flow fifth pegs and flow um, brake lever. Uh, reason being is that when you're on the canyons, you, you, you know, you don't want your foot to be everywhere. You want it to be planted and feel like, you know, you're, you're one with the bike and, and flows just, just do that for you. I, I run flow pegs on all my bikes. It's just that grip. It's crazy. I did the Harley Davidson heavy breather. Um, I just like the aesthetics of it. Could have gone a different route. I ran it on my bikes and just the aesthetics of it. I, I think that it's just pretty cool. Moving up in the engine, again, I did the did the stage three with the Torque Cam of Harley. You know, I'm still breaking it in, so I haven't really opened it up. Power is, is crazy, so, you know, having that 117 is just, feels amazing. I did the, the Saddleman seat. I've ran Saddleman in all my builds. You know, you just feel super planted. You feel that wall just holds you in there. You're not going anywhere. It just feels you, makes you feel very comfortable when you're riding it. Did the diamond stitching. I, I wanted something of that old school look. And I, I think that we got that with the diamond stitching. Um, again, the, 
The point of this bike was to have something look retro with a modern twist. We wanted to make it seem like this was coming out of Harley's factory. You know, what Harley should be coming out through the factory. Um, so that's sort of the style that we were going for. Moving next, I, I decided to do the Sport Glide bags. I could have done any other bags, but you know, those these Sport Glide bags are just are amazing. They they go with the bike, they're they're from Harley. Again, going with the same theme of making the bike sort of look like it came from the factory. They're easily detachable, so that, that was also a huge plus. I can just take them off in a minute, in less than a minute. After that, I have the tour pack. Again, going for that FXRT look and feel of the bike. You know, I'm planning on doing a lot of long trips and in the tour pack, it is perfect to fit uh, all that extra gear that, that I'm gonna take. It's crazy because I didn't think I was gonna get enough storage, but but it holds a lot, a lot of things. So, you know, definitely happy that I went with the tour pack. Sort of balances out the bike. It's a quick uh, detach. I'm taking it off. It takes less than 30 seconds to take it out. I relocated my gauges. It's just a must have when you're riding hard on the canyon. Not having to look down is huge. Especially when you're riding hard and, and going through twisty roads, having your gauges up front and knowing what RPMs you are and how fast you're going. I did the Krause risers. Um, I've ran Krause risers on my last bike, on my Fat Bob. Really happy with it. Um, feels sturdy. It makes me feel very confident when, when I'm riding pretty hard. MX bars. So moving on, I did the, the Bitwell grips. I love the stacks of them. I like how they, they match my diamond stitching in my seat and my tour pack. Oh, great grips. I decided to, to add the cruise control. I know that the, the Dyna models had cruise control and I, I had to put it on. It's just, it's a lifesaver, especially when you're, when you're traveling for miles. Having that, you know, it gives you that opportunity to rest your hands. So much needed. Um, so I decided to put it on there. Uh, next, it's, it's the FXRT fairing. It's badass. I, I want it to go with that classic old school look that this fairing gives. The wind protection is great. Definitely not a lot of buffering in my chest you're not fighting the wind I decided to go with the speakers and and add the the kicker sound system it's just that added having those those speakers you know bump up your music bump your music it's just it's a great addition it's it's something that i i wanted on my on this bike and i i, I think that that it just it just awesome looks awesome with the fairing this painting was done by seth aggressive designs he just knocked it out the park um, I gave him the color schemes and, and the colors that I, I wanted, but I gave him the, the creative freedom to do what he does does best and, and just create a sick pattern, a, a sick club style pattern. You know, he, he color matched the powder coating. I wanted to have red. I just wanted to have that dark red that was sent set the bike and, and make it feel like it came out the factory. Here we have the Speed Merchant uh, skid plate. I did it for aesthetics and sometimes, you know, you get a lot of grime off the road and it's functional, keeps your bike nice and clean. I, I decided to go with the Moon's headlight. It just looks so aggressive and so nice. I also went with the Allo Art uh, turn signals. I wanted something the incognito and, and very small that would fit the bike. We, we did our powder coating with Andrew's powder coating. You know, he just did an absolutely amazing job. We sent him out what we wanted to do, what kind of color, what kind of red we wanted. You know, he just killed it on all the powder coating. We couldn't be happier. We did the lower rocker box covers, we did the brake levers, we did the clutch, um, and, and it, came out, it came out awesome. Also, I did the alloy art turn signals. I just think it goes well with the bike. Moving on, I decided to go with the chain drive. I just wanted that extra torquiness all around. It looks badass. So definitely a great addition. It's one of my favorite modifications of the bike. I decided to go with the RWD Monoshock. I had it on my last bike and, and it just performs very well on the canyon. So, you know, couldn't be happier with the performance of that shock. All around, you know, Seth from Aggressive Designs, um, Keith from Lay Laws, and everyone involved, everyone combining to, to make this build. I just sort of had the idea of sort of what I wanted, going to Lay Laws and going to Matt and going to Keith. You know, it was just different ideas that, that popped up. Oh, why don't we do this? Why don't we do that? I can't stress enough how, how beautiful and how awesome it came out.